Good morning again. This is our final week in the New Year's uh, resolution, revolution sermon uh, series. And I'm, I'm excited about this one uh, because I had fun like preparing the introduction to this message. Because uh, a number of years ago, it is, it, am I on time? Are you guys easy? Okay, I, I had a blank stare. And a number of years ago, a pastor who was very wise said to me, you know, my staff asked a question this week. Yep, yep. And what they asked was, they said, if our church disappeared tomorrow, would anyone outside of our church family know or care? And I thought, well, you know, that's, there, there's a lot of wisdom in asking that question. You know, in the first week, of this series, we talked about personal changes, right? A revolution, <laughs> personally, in terms of control of our life. Last week, we talked about family and the fact that, that everybody has three families. You have the family you inherit, the family you build, and the family you choose. If you miss those, go online or Facebook or online, you can watch those. But today, this message on community, it focuses really for us, you know, all the way from Anchorage into the valley in terms of our community. And so I asked that question, you know, I had my notebook and my pencil, that, you know, if we disappeared tomorrow, would, would anyone in the community nor care? And, the, and, and, you know, what about us? Do we make a difference in the community? And really, that was a fun question for me to answer. You know, I started with the little kids, and I know I've forgotten many things here, but between mops and preschool playgroup, you know, open free gym time uh, here during the week, we impact uh, over 70 families, probably closer to 100 families. <coughs> Children's ministry, PBS, over 500 kids and workers. Our fall carnival sees over 1,000 people from the community here. That's all free. Upward sports, we don't charge anything for the rental of the gym for that. We impact over 100 families. All of those things total over 2,000 lives that are touched in this community, the living nativity alone. We had over 120 volunteer workers and over 600 people who came through. Our junior and senior high ministries touched the lives of over 100 students. Over 400 adults took part in one or more of our small group survival studies last year. We operate a local, our own food bank. We support the rescue mission. We have volunteers at the downtown soup kitchen, at the men's prison, at the women's prison. Through all these, we touch the lives of well over a thousand additional people in our community. We also help feed some of the neediest children in Anchorage through the Kids' Kitchen. We run a summer ministry and an after-school club there. We offer Monday night volleyball free to our community. We host a Christian school that enrolls over 170 students. Through all of those things, we touch the lives of more than 2,000 additional people in the community. We support the ministries of Youth for Christ and UAA's college ministry, Mosaic, again, touching the lives of hundreds more. We offer counseling to individuals and couples and families, classes dealing with marriage, with addiction, with finances, other life issues, touching the lives of more than 500 people last year. We offer men's and women's retreats and activities, touching the lives of more than 1,000 people last year. And last year alone, more than 500 people here in our local community prayed to receive Christ through the efforts of this ministry. So how about that? Thank you. Right? We, we uh, support ministry on the Yukon River and in Bristol Bay. We support missionaries on the African continent in Morocco and Uganda and Ghana. We plant churches in Mexico. We support numerous pastors there. We support missionaries in Brazil and in Colombia. We support dozens of church planters in India and pay the school tuition for over 100 of the poorest children in India. We've sent Christmas shoe boxes all around the globe and all of those things again touching the lives of thousands more people. So yes, what you do makes a difference. And today, we're going to talk about what a New Year's revolution would mean for our community. But before we dig in, here at the crossing, we always start with our Bibles. And I'd like you to hold up your Bible or your tablet or your phone, whatever you get your scripture on, and repeat this with me, please. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. In this book are the keys to an abundant life, a joy-filled life, and eternal life. 
I will take God in his word. Amen. That is where we begin and end. Open to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, but we're going to be all over the place. So start at the left, turn right. Get, when you get past Joshua, Judges, Ruth, you'll get 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, and you can hold your place there. Now, we've, we've defined revolution each week by revolution. It, it, by definition, it is the forcible removal of leadership and then the replacement of that leadership with something new and different. So when we talk about a revolution in our community, whether we're talking about our local area or our municipality or our state or our nation or the world, whether when I talk about the community in my neighborhood or the global community, every person on earth, there can be no revolution without a change of leadership. So I want to talk about the current leadership in our community, in our state, in our nation, in our world. And it may be different from what you're thinking. To understand our current leadership, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Before our world was created, God had created beautiful and powerful heavenly beings. And, and their purpose, like ours, was to worship Him. And Satan, the most beautiful and powerful,